Hey, it's Angela from the blog AngelaMarieMade.com. I'm excited to share how to build our DIY king bed frame. If you watched our DIY bedroom makeover reveal last week, then you saw that our DIY king bed frame was a huge part of our bedroom transformation. This bed cost us less than $200 in lumber to build, and I love how it turned out. You can also stain or paint it. The mattress opening for our DIY King bed is 77 inches wide by 80 inches long, which left a little bit of extra room around our specific mattress and box spring. So feel free to adjust the measurements as you need to with your own specific mattress. All right, let's get started. Begin by gathering all of your materials and making your initial lumber cut. And you can get the full cut list, material list, and tutorial on my blog, which is linked below in the description box. For lumber, you're going to need 4x4s, 2x4s, 2x2s, 1x4s, and a 4 foot by 8 foot sheet of plywood at 3 quarters inch thick. For the plywood, I prefer to use formaldehyde free plywood, and I'll link the specific one I use below. I use it for all of my DIY furniture builds. We had our three plywood rip cuts done at the home improvement store for our footboard, headboard, and side rails, but you can also do them with a table saw or a circular saw and straight edge guide. Step two is to add pocket holes to the headboard lumber. Use a Craig jig and add four pocket holes along each of the two sides and along the top edge of the large plywood headboard piece. Make sure your Craig jig is set to three quarters of an inch thick wood. Also, it helps to have a helping hand holding the large plywood board while drilling the holes. Then add pocket holes to each end of the three 2x4s at 74 inches, which are for the headboard. Make sure to adjust the Craig jig for one and a half inch thick wood for these pieces. Step three is to assemble the headboard. Attach one of the 2x4s to the top of the 4x4 posts with wood glue and two and a half inch Craig screws. Next, we are going to attach our large plywood board and we want it to be inset by three quarters of an inch for our molding, which is three quarters of an inch thick. So we used scrap three quarter inch wood under the plywood to make sure it was inset evenly. We used these scrap boards on both the left and right side and top part. Attach the plywood board with wood glue and one and a quarter inch Craig screws. Attach a second 2x4 behind the plywood board towards the center of the headboard. Again, using wood glue and Craig screws.
Mark six and a half inches up from the bottom of the four by fours on each side. Attach the third two by four at these marks so that the bottom of the two by four is aligned with the mark. Again, use wood glue and Craig screws to attach it. Now it's time to add the trim to the headboard. Measure the inside of the headboard along the plywood and cut your trim to size. You're going to need to make the long cut from the trim with 45 degree angle cuts on each side. And from the two short pieces for the sides, you're going to need to make one 45 degree angle cut on one end and a straight 90 degree cut on the other end. Install the molding along the inside edges of the headboard with wood glue and one and a quarter inch brad nails and a brad nailer. Then for the top trim, add a one by four with wood glue and one and a quarter inch brad nails to the top of the headboard. Now your headboard is built. Step five is to add pocket holes to the footboard lumber. Use a Craig jig and add pocket holes along all four sides of the plywood footboard piece. Then add pocket holes to each end of the two two by fours at 74 inches. Make sure to adjust your Craig jig for this thicker wood. Step six is to assemble the footboard. Add the plywood between the two two by twos and make sure all of the pocket holes are facing up. The plywood needs to be attached flush with the back edge of the two by twos. So we use some scrap three quarter inch thick wood again underneath of the plywood to help with this step. Attach the plywood to the two by twos with a generous amount of wood glue and one and a quarter inch Craig screws. Use clamps to help hold everything in place. Next, attach the plywood in two by twos between the two short four by fours so that the top edges are aligned with each other. We attach the two by twos with a half inch inset on the four by four posts using scrap half inch wood but you can also use wood shims to do this as well. Use two and a half inch Craig screws in the two by two pocket holes and one and a quarter inch Craig screws in the plywood pocket holes to attach everything together, along with wood glue as well. Now your footboard is complete. Step seven is to add pocket holes to the side rails lumber. Use a Craig jig and add pocket holes along all four sides of the two plywood boards for the side rails. Add pocket holes every eight to 10 inches along the top and bottom edges. There are going to be three two by twos used on each side rail, so you'll need a total of six two by twos for the side rails. For four of the two by twos, add two pocket holes to each end. For the other two by twos, don't add any pocket holes. Step eight is to assemble the two side rails. Place the plywood between the one two by two with pocket holes on the end and one two by two with no pocket holes. Make sure all of the pocket holes are facing up. Attach the boards the same way as the footboard with the plywood flush with the back edge of the two by twos. Again, using some scrap three quarter inch wood underneath of the plywood to help. Attach the plywood to the two by twos with a generous amount of wood glue and one and a quarter inch Craig screws. Use clamps to help hold everything in place.
Now it's time to add the 2x2 two two slat support board to the side rail board. Attach a third 2x2, two two, one with pocket holes on the ends, on top of the 2x2 two two that has no pocket holes. Attach using a lot of wood glue and six two and a half inch wood screws along the 2x2. Two two. Now our slat support board is in place. Repeat these steps for the second side rail board. Step nine is to build the middle slat boards. For each of the six one by fours at 77 inches, mark 19 inches, 38 inches, and 57 inches on the board. Then add the two by fours at eight inches under the one by four at these points with wood glue and one and a quarter inch self-tapping wood screws for all six slat boards so that they each have three two by four supports under them. If you're going to be using a mattress only and no box spring, then I would add a few more slat board supports. Now all of the pieces for your DIY king bed frame are built. At this point, it's best to paint or stain before assembling all four parts together. Step 10 is to paint or stain the bed frame. You can stain or paint the headboard. If staining, fill all nail holes in with a stainable wood filler. If painting, you can use a lightweight spackle for the nail holes and lightly sand them. I also like to use spackle on the knot holes. Also, if you're painting, make sure to caulk all the gaps and seams with a paintable caulk. Then prime the wood first, and I like to go over the wood knots with a second coat of primer. Let the primer dry. After priming, add two coats of paint. We used Ivory White by Benjamin Moore in Eggshell. Move the bed frame in place where you want it. Then use some scrap 2x4s cut to 6.5 inches to help hold up the side rails in place while attaching them to the headboard and footboard. Attach the side rails with one and a quarter inch crank screws in the plywood pocket holes and two and a half inch crank screws in the two by two pocket holes. Make sure that the two by two slat board edges are aligned flush with the inside four by four edges. There should be a six and a half inch clearance under the side rails. Also, it's important to not use wood glue when attaching the side rails to the headboard and footboard because you want to be able to move the bed frame easily in the future if needed. Finally, attach the six middle slat boards to the side two by two slat support boards on the side rails with one and a quarter inch self-tapping wood screws. Space them apart about 10 to 12 inches. Now your DIY king bed frame is complete and you can add the mattress, box spring, and bedding. I absolutely love how our DIY bed frame turned out and I love having a real bed frame and our bed off the floor and no longer on the ground anymore. Let me know if you have any questions below in the comments. 
and please subscribe to my channel for more fun DIY building and decor and DIY videos. Thanks again for stopping by.